Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday evening, July 28th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're tracking today what was Invest 92L, now dubbed Potential Tropical Cyclone 9. That word potential just means that it is expected to become a tropical storm soon. It is not yet one, uh, but it will soon and is expected to bring tropical storm conditions to land areas. So in this case, we have our system and it's moving quickly west-northwestward, expected to bring tropical storm conditions to the Leeward Islands and to Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and then Hispanic. Uh, so we do have advisories from the National Hurricane Center on this, uh, but what we are dealing with today still remains, on the whole, a broad, disorganized system by tropical standards. It is still producing heavy weather, though. It's not a tropical storm yet, but we've already seen uh, tropical storm force winds near 40 miles per hour at the surface on the north side from a recon plane that flew around in there earlier this afternoon is just now leaving. Um, part of the earlier part of the mission isn't showing here, but they found very strong winds aloft of 50 to 60 uh, miles per hour, and uh, we are seeing some strong winds as they leave the storm as well on that north side. And then the lighter winds are shown here farther to the east where that broad trough axis is away from the thunderstorms, and uh, there's no organized center here. All of this wind is south or east, and so we have a just a trough axis at the moment. We do not have uh, that much of a closed circulation to speak of. It may technically be closed back here somewhere, maybe, but even if it is, it's extremely oblong at the moment, very elongated, and this is not consolidated enough to be considered a tropical storm. But we do see more convective activity than yesterday. By that I mean thunderstorms, which you can see here, all along the north side, and way up here to the northeast. And we continue to talk about these two different lobes of the elliptically shaped uh, wave envelope that we have. We've kind of had uh, one lobe off to the northeast and one down toward the southwest. And the trend over the last couple of days has been for the southwestern side to be stronger than computer models originally expected. And the resulting track of the system has come faster and farther south. And so now we're seeing some of this heavy weather coming right in to the Leeward Islands and potentially even reaching down to St. Lucia and Barbados and St. Vincent overnight, though the strongest winds will likely remain Martinique and northward. Those are the strong northeasterly winds on the north side. All the wind south of these thunderstorms is quite light. So really what you're looking at here in Barbados and St. Lucia is just heavy rain tonight, most likely. Uh, we see that the northern lobe is sticking its nose out here, just a little bit of extra rotation you can see in these lower level clouds at the end of the loop. That is the vorticity or spin maximum on the north side. And this system so far the last few days has been tilted southwest to northeast. That orientation is about to start changing. If you look at the low level clouds here, you see them coming out of a more south-southwesterly direction very fast on the east side, uh, you know, fairly brisk. Um, and this is indicating to us that we're going to start with this flow tilting the wave over so that we go more from a southwest to northeast orientation to more of a south to north orientation as this part of the wave is going to rotate over more quickly as we go through the overnight hours tonight and early tomorrow. So what we're likely to see here is a slightly more symmetric wave envelope tomorrow. Uh, the center of action or the center of rotation is probably on the whole in here somewhere where that wave axis that the plane found was. There's not really a surface center down here. You might see a little bit of rotation in the milky white clouds, but that's a mid-level center that will decay and is moving off to the southwest. The actual center of action is likely to be somewhere in here, moving west-northwest tomorrow through the Leeward Islands. This little part here is going to rotate around and kind of join with it, and what we'll probably be left with is a more upright wave pocket that might be a little bit more symmetric, and we might try to close off a circulation here sometime tomorrow when that happens. But exactly where and when that happens is still a big question mark. This is a large wave. It is very difficult when these things are forming to really pin down with confidence how this is going to evolve. So while I just described this to you and what we'll likely see tomorrow, there's kind of some question marks over, you know, 100 miles this way, 100 miles that way. Not entirely sure here. 
Uh, so there are some questions on the exact track. Obviously, this can matter for islands like Puerto Rico, which may get the nasty north side if it's tracking more to the south of the island, or maybe less heavy weather if it goes to the north. So these details are very important as we go through the next couple of days, and some of this is unfortunately just watch and see uh, because the confidence is kind of low. The other thing that matters here is how quickly this actually wraps up because how strong... Uh, this storm gets, we're going to call it, I guess, PTC-9. When it gets named, it'll be named Isaias. And when Isaias uh, actually forms here, which is likely to happen, uh, how quickly it gets strong in this area, if it does have that chance, will determine what it does later. But there's a lot of factors at play. Uh, we're going to talk about some of those now. This is some of the model guidance we have from uh, now the Euro uh, showing the initialization this morning, that broad area of yellow, broad area of spin. That's our wave envelope. You're going to see it tilt more upright and symmetric like I talked about on the satellite loop. And you can see that on the model now. It's a little bit stronger on the Euro than the last couple of runs, but it's still just barely a closed circulation tomorrow morning over the leeward, uh, the leeward islands on the model. We go forward one more day to Thursday morning. You can see how quickly it's moving from there to there in 24 hours. And uh, Puerto Rico does get the nasty side of it, but it also runs right headlong into the Dominican Republic. And the very, very tall mountains there will easily disrupt any tropical system that encounters it. And this is going to be one of the big things to watch with this system is does it encounter uh, Hispaniola or does it avoid it? In this case, uh, the wave is large, so part of it will interact with the island. There's no doubt about that. But the question really is, does a storm form in the northern part of this wave envelope and then manage to evoid or evade the island just barely to the north? Some models do this and some don't. The European is one that doesn't, and it kind of keeps this an open wave, not quite even really a storm. And it kind of scoots through Hispaniola and eastern Cuba and then ends up in the Florida Straits as a very weak system that is highly sheared uh, with all the strong westerly shear coming out of the west on most of these models by the time it gets over here. So the Euro is in the weak camp. But some other models are not quite as weak. If we look at the GFS, for example, we can see a similar evolution. We'll go to 8 a.m. tomorrow where, again, maybe a broad barely closed circulation over the Leeward Islands, possibly a tropical storm, maybe not quite yet. By Wednesday afternoon and evening, we see the north side get really active on the GFS. Really strong convection fires there, and it starts refocusing the storm into a smaller vortex north of Puerto Rico within the northern part of the broader wave envelope where the north side really starts to get concentrated. This is more aggressive than the Euro, and this manages to slip north of Hispaniola and avoid the mountains. And so now we have a bona fide tropical storm on the GFS that is able to track north of the terrain. Now, after this point, we will know a lot more about the future of the system beyond the Northeast Caribbean. Impacts in the Northeast Caribbean up to this point are likely to be pretty similar no matter what happens, considering the storm already has some pretty big wind with it on the north side, so gales 40, 45, 50 miles per hour winds at times, very possible in these islands from Martinique northward through the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, and lots of heavy rain. But the good news is this will blow through pretty quickly. Uh, for points farther west, the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, Cuba, Florida, and the southeastern U.S., what this looks like on Thursday will determine a lot because A, we'll know if it's running into Hispaniola and B, we'll know how strong it is if it's avoiding the island and that will matter because of the winds aloft. If we look at the GFS on Thursday morning, here's the storm north of Puerto Rico on the model. This is the upper level wind and we talked yesterday about this upper level trough that you can see in this kind of kinked uh, flow here, flowing like that out of the north and then bending from the southwest. This trough is trying to impart a strong southwesterly flow on the storm aloft and tilt it over. And that kind of shear is very detrimental to the storm. Now, if the storm is weak, if it uh, encounters Hispaniola or it's just sloppy and takes its time getting together, it's going to be generating less concentrated thunderstorm activity and releasing less heat in the upper levels of the atmosphere. The heat that those thunderstorms release is what generates this bubble of clockwise circulating air that you see here. That's the outflow anticyclone 
of the tropical storm. That anticyclone is a bubble of warmth that can fight this trough to the west and push it out of the way if it's strong enough. And if the storm is stronger, this bubble is stronger and can kind of shield the storm, if you will, for a longer period of time. So on some models, this is stronger and on some it's weaker. On the GFS, you'll see it try to kind of push the trough out of the way, but it kind of fails. Uh, so eventually this flow around the trough becomes southwest to northeast right over top of the storm. You can see that location, the upper level flow is out of the southwest. And the storm is moving toward the west-northwest, so these winds are in different directions. The low-level steering flow and the upper-level wind aloft, that shear really weakens the storm. So on the GFS, you can see this pressure number is still quite high, 1,005 millibars. It's not a very strong storm, and you can kind of see this on the vorticity field here, where this ball of yellow actually weakens over time as it gets into the Bahamas. It's still a tropical storm, but it's a rather weak one on the model. And many models such as the UK Met, the European, and the GFS all kind of agree that this is going to be something that the storm likely encounters to some extent. But again, if it happens to be stronger north of Puerto Rico uh, than some models currently expect, it'll be able to fight the shear maybe a little bit better. And we can see that happen on at least one model that's a little stronger, and that's the H Wharf which has a much stronger storm in the Bahamas. I kind of skipped ahead there, but you can see on the 200 millibar wind, the upper level uh, bubble here is better able to fight the shear for a little bit longer. And we actually have a much stronger storm north of Hispaniola on the H wharf. And as this continues into the Bahamas, uh, it has this very strong outflow anticyclone that is fighting that old trough better. In fact, you can barely see the trough left over because this clockwise flow has really taken over. However, there is still some shear here, and uh, on the H wharf there is some struggles with uh, shear and dry air periodically pushing into the circulation. You can sometimes see it in spurts and sputters where this dark green moisture on this plot is occasionally eroded on the west and southern sides of the vortex. So even though this is the strongest model currently showing the strongest solution, for future Isaias, uh, it still shows that the storm will likely encounter some kind of impediment on its way through the Bahamas. And so right now the consensus is that the path will not be easy for Isaias to grow strong, but it shows that the possibility for it to be reasonably strong is still there. This is a, you know, maybe a category two hurricane on the H wharf, for instance. That doesn't mean this is gonna happen, it's just one possible solution, but it's within the range of possibilities. For that reason, if you're in the Bahamas, Cuba, Florida, and the southeastern US, Keep an eye on this over the next few days. It is moving quickly, so we're within maybe even four days of potential impacts to the Western Bahamas and Florida if it gets this far west. So it's not that far off, uh, but we're not gonna know a lot of the answers to these questions until Thursday. So we have some time left before we're really gonna know, but keep a close eye on it. This is the NHC forecast clearly uh, showing a concerning kind of track if a storm does manage to survive. The center is difficult to track right now. Again, they're showing where it is now in this exact track, but it's really a large envelope within which things could happen during the next 24 hours or 48 hours. So again, expect that this track could potentially change the intensity could potentially change. This is not a very confident forecast, and NHC even says as much in their own forecast discussion. But we do know that impacts are going to spread far and wide across the Northeast Caribbean, so all these blue colors here indicate a tropical storm warning, winds in excess of 40 miles per hour expected in these areas, and uh, over quite a broad region, it's gonna be hard to miss most of these islands given how large the wave is, and then strong rains also coming with that. Again, fortunately, it is moving quickly, so by the time we're getting to Thursday night, it's already out of the Northeast Caribbean, but potentially affecting Hispaniola with heavy rains and flash flooding, always a massive concern there with the mudslides and the tall mountains. And then uh, after it gets past Thursday here, again, really depends where it is. If it passes right over Hispaniola, we may never hear from it again, except for some rain that comes up through Cuba and Florida. If it passes north of Hispaniola, though, and is surviving as a vortex that has some strength to it, then it may have the ability to self-sustain enough to be a storm of note through the Bahamas and potentially Florida and maybe up further up the eastern seaboard as we get through the weekend and into early next week. So it's something to keep an eye on right now. Not an imminent concern if you're in the United States, but it is something that could be on the table as we head toward the weekend. So keep a close eye on the forecast developments over the next couple of days. Again, we will know much more on Thursday when it's near or passing Puerto Rico. 
So we'll continue to watch this. You'll continue to get updates here, but check with the National Hurricane Center for the latest and best information on this developing storm. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.